There you go. There you go. Camera, camera. All right, y'all. This is Larry Smith. That's Larry Smith and his daughter. His okay. mom. That's him. Larry, talk to us. What is it like? Is it hard to even imagine that you're out? Oh, this, this is this absolutely is a grateful moment. And if y'all wouldn't mind, please. I got my statement already prepared. <laughs> Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Let me talk to your daughter. What's it like seeing your dad? I can't even imagine. Her father, Larry Smith, has been released after 27, 26 years. Greetings, everyone. Hold on one second. Greetings, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank God for giving me this opportunity and carrying me during this ordeal and for answering my prayers. To my amazingly wonderful mother, Deborah Smith, for being the number one mom who never gave up on me. Always extending encouragement and not allowing me to give up on myself. My best friend, Teresa Gibson, my sister, Danielle Graves, my brother, Dwayne Lewis, and my beautiful daughter, Nakira Buller. I thank you all for your love and never ending support. And a very special thank you to Valerie Newman and the Wayne County Conviction Integrity Union for taking on the fight to free those who are innocent even though the CIU are working with limited resources. And of course, Wayne County Prosecutor Ken Worthy for a great change of heart from guilty, guilty, guilty to one wrongly for convicted is one too many. And of course, the other two awesome women in my life, Attorney Mary Owens and Claudia Whitman of NCAN, who have supported my cause by working tirelessly pro bono for over a decade. Also, a special thanks to Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib for showing me and my mother that democracy exists. Without any of these people after mention, I would have likely died in prison for a crime I did not commit. Rest in peace, Grandma Duck, Grandma Smith, and number one dad, William Brown. God, Mom, Valerie Lewis, Aunt Ruth, Kim, Reverend Cookie Neal, and the rest of the family who are looking down from heaven, smiling over this moment. I remember telling the great Scott Lewis that I know at least 100 innocent people who have been wrongfully convicted. His response was, Larry, if you know that many, imagine how many there actually are. And I promise God, if he gave me the chance to regain my freedom, I will be a voice for the voiceless and help shine light on as many cases as I can. Many of the wrongful convicted have filed and requested that their cases be reopened. Some are currently under review by one of the two conviction integrity units, such as Paul Russ, Jerome Hale Bay, Dennis Beeson, Gary Hampton, Marvin Bradley, Jesse Agnew, William Wheatley, Diopolis Smith, Earl Johnson, John Sistrunk, Chanel Holloway, and Arthur Campbell. However, due to COVID-19, this already slow process and lack of serious funding has hindered the CIU efforts to nearly a snail's pace. Furthermore, I humbly ask Governor Gretchen Whitman to use her clemency power to release the above mentioned men along with other elderly, sick, and vulnerable incarcerated individuals like Fenner Bradford Bay, 68, 26 years, sir, innocent with diabetes, cancer, and serious respiratory issues. Wayne Duff, 68, 36 years, sir, innocent with cancer. Robert Partee, 81, 41 years, sir, with prostate cancer, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and 85% left anterior descendant artery and diabetic. Ricardo Farrell, 63, 40 years served with thyroiditis and enlarged prostate. Warren Dawson, 76, 34 years served with hypertension, chronic ischemic, heart disease, hyperlipidemia, enlarged prostate. David Wakefield, 56, 34 years served, stage four cancer and bone cancer. Dwayne Harris, 72, 47 years served. Charlie Wilson, 58, 38 years served, first victim of Edward Allen, who was used by police to testify falsely. Reginald Bell, 53, 32 years served, with 16 years misconduct free. Some of these men are innocent, 
and others should be considered aged out of crime, timed out, or whatever it's called. But I want to ask the public and Governor Whitman, when is enough enough? You had clemency powers and executive order powers to release those most at risk of contracting the coronavirus. Compounding the above, your administration allowed every listed person to contract COVID-19, which led to the demise of Garwood Turner, 139766, whom which fell within the specific guidelines of CDC vulnerable subclass, whose commutation sat on your desk since March 2020. Turner, 76 years of age, for 46 years served on a par parolable life sentence with his well-known health conditions, diabetes, Parkinson, dementia, and heart conditions. Had you responded, you could have reduced Michigan's growing budget, where one in five dollars of the annual budget goes towards funding the corrections department. Doing so could leave additional funds for schools and fixing the damn road, which was part of your campaign promise, and you promised not to cut school funding. Michigan claims to not have a death penalty, but I was sentenced to death by old age, the coronavirus, or some other disease, like so many other Michigan prisoners. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I would still be on the bunk, being terrorized and retaliated against by Ron Martin, who I filed a complaint to Attorney General Dana Nessel for repeatedly calling a prisoner a gay sissy. His Martin's bullying tactics and hate categorizations of LGBTQ prisoners creates a hostile environment for both staff and prisoners alike and promoted hate instead of rehabilitation. Systemic racism and police brutality come in different forms from today's regular beatings, murders caught on camera, to wrongful convictions of the innocent, black, Latino, white, and other sinners for crimes they did not commit. Black and all lives matter. While in prison, I wrote every Michigan governor and MDOC director for the past 20 years, including Governor Whitmer and current MDOC director Heidi Washington, along with countless others in position of authority concerning things that could help with rehabilitation, the family structure, the state's budget, social distancing, and the fact that I was an innocent man suffering in prison for a crime I did not commit. Now I'm hopeful today as an exonerated man whose suffering has produced love that my experience would not go in vain and can help fix this broken criminal justice system. Last, but certainly not least, I want to give an extended special thanks to Lucino Hamilton and Ramon Ward. From the day when we learned all three of us have been victims of the Detroit Police Department's ring of snitches, we continue to have each other's back. I love you all, along with my brothers Daryl Seegers, Aaron Saunters, Lador Watkins, Michael Powell, Danny Burton, Deshaun Reed, Rand Tommy Hires, Kevin Harrington, George Clark, Justly Johnson, Kidry Scott, Eric Anderson, Bernard Howard. If I did not mention you, don't think I've forgotten you. What did you tell me every day, Jerry Thomas? You would say, Butter, don't give up. Help is on the way. Ms. Newman got us in the slot. If you are guilty, be better, do better, and live better. If you are innocent, don't give up. Help is on the way. Thank you and God bless. This day will come where you be walking out of those doors as a free man. I always hope for it. I was always hopeful. Sometimes I ain't had hope, but I was hopeful. What's it like? What? First of all, how old were you when you went in? And 18. How, and how old are you now? 45. What's it like breathing air as a free man? Woo-wee! Hey, Amen. I'm grateful to every one of you. Thank you. What's the first thing you want to do? Go to go to D. Reed's Coney Island. Deshaun Reed, D's Coney Island. That's where I want to go. Yes, I do. What do you say to other people who are still inside and still want that freedom and are still innocent? Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep striving. Keep fighting. Keep standing. Keep walking tall. Don't let nobody cause you to, to think that you did something. And you ain't do it. Stand on it. And stand ten toes down. And I got y'all. Holler at me. I got you. Larry Buttersmith on Facebook. Holler at me. I post y'all up. I love y'all. Salute. Woo! Who do you got here with you today? Tell me, let me give you this. For my mom. Huh? Let's go. Come here. Come on. You want somebody to get that from me? All these three gentlemen. So these two gentlemen. What's it like if we could get you four together? Get you four, Mr. Hamilton, step up. Get get you all together. I mean, you were you all incarcerated at the same time? Yes. Yes. What's it like, all four of you being together here again on the outside? Oh, it's wonderful. 
It's wonderful. To have, we all exonerees. We all innocent. And it, to see justice finally done, it is truly a wonderful feeling to be with guys like this. And we are all moving forward. And it's going to be hard. But when you get out after doing 10, 20, 30 years, I did 35 years. Mm -hmm. And life comes at you 100 miles an hour. And so you think about the family that you lost, all that you're going to have to go through. But you got to be grateful. And you got to thank God for the blessing of being free. You got to thank Kim Worthy, Valerie Newman, Claudia Whitman, Wolfgang Euler, and the great lawyers, Mary Owens, and all the people. And we thank people like y'all for bringing attention to matters like this because we need more attention, more media scrutinization of police misconduct, prosecutorial misconduct, and false forensics. And we, life, all we can do is count on people like y'all to bring attention to this matter. And I, I love these guys. These guys, we did time together in some of the most harshest conditions. We've seen murders, people get killed, stabbed, and we still got to maintain our sense of uh, uh, morality in our, even in our own mind and not allow the prison system to destroy our minds. And so for many of us, we didn't allow prison to uh, break us we allowed it to make us. And so many of us, we didn't, prison didn't make us bitter, it made us better. And so all I can say is God is good. And I just thank God. Daryl, can you spell your first and last name, please? My name is Daryl Seegers, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-S-I-G-G-E-R-S. Thank you. Thank you. We also ask that the governor, so currently there's only two conviction integrity units in the state. And the one in Wayne County has to be over 25 men in three years. That's just one county. We ask that the governor and the attorney general encourage the prosecutors in each county to request or demand that a conviction integrity unit be opened up in every county. And that is true. Because courts are limited in what they can do. But conviction integrity units, through prosecutors office, they have more power. They're able to do more. They have, a lot of times, more resources. Here go Larry Smith's mother right here coming up. <laughs> Wow. I know it is, but my man's like y'all, man. My man's don't work. Y'all see my man's? Y'all see my man's? That's right. Pardon me. This is what y'all see the man. This is the man they provided us with. What were your emotions as you, as you saw your son walk out the door there? There's no words to explain how I feel. Okay. No. But it's a good feeling for a change. You always feel good to feel good. Okay. You, never, you never gave up? Oh, oh no. That's my son. No. You don't give up on your love, man. When you know that they didn't do it, you don't give up. See? That's called hope. Faith. That's, That's right. That's all That's we right. have. Amen. If you That's don't right. have money, you gotta have faith. That's right. Can you give us your phone name, Deborah? Okay. We gotta go to the first line. I'm gone, sir. Okay, bro. Uh oh. Hey, 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 what y'all doing? All right, folks. Um, join us later today on Action News. Simon Shaket, my colleague, will have so much more on this amazing story for this family. Larry Smith, incarcerated for over 25 years, now free, exonerated, and with his family once again. Thank you so much, and take care.